number one thing about the law of attraction <coughs> is what you really want you get now how many of you feel you're getting what you really want right at the moment some of you but not many so absolutely every one of you who didn't put your hand up you do not understand the number one rule of the law of attraction what you really want you are already right now getting that is the number one principle of the law of attraction so then a lot of people go with that well how does that work like I really want to have a million dollars and I don't have that I really want to have a new car but I don't have that I really want to have a relationship that's working but I don't seem to have that you know, I really want to have children that love me but they all seem to be angry at me I don't have that so how can you say I'm getting what I really want right now how many of you feel that way? How many of you feel that way? How can you say that I'm getting what I really want? Yeah? The truth is you are getting what you really want right now. And that's very, very important truth to understand right at the beginning. But it's not what you really want here. This is the problem. Is that we think that if we think it's what we want, then we should get it. But it's not about that. It's about a thing called soul condition. And later in our discussion today, we're going to focus on what the soul condition really is. Now, in the secret, in the who, who of you have seen the secret? Most of you? Good, that's great. Now, in the secret, it recommends that you think about things a lot, doesn't it? Visualize, conceive, think about things, and then what will you think about, you will get. Now, how many of you have tried that? <laughs> Particularly after seeing the secret. <laughs> and how many of you found that's really, really successful? <laughs> okay, so not many. So why is it that not many find it successful? There's only about four people who put up their hand in that second question, by the way. How, how come out of a hundred people who've tried it, only four people have seemed to work for? It's a good question, isn't it? So then it feels like, oh, I'm being fed a furphy here. I'm furphy, AJ word furphy, means I'm being fed a distraction, I'm being fed a lie. And a lot of times we feel that, don't we? That we've been fed a distraction here. This secret thing, which is about this law of attraction thing, doesn't really work either. It's another one of these new age things that doesn't work. You know? But the truth is when we understand it completely, you will see that it works perfectly. But the key is to understand it completely. And that's why I want to have this discussion with you today. The law of attraction is a very, very important law. It's a law actually that governs the universe. It governs the universe in the physical state, in the state we're in. But it also governs the universe for all of the spirits who have come with us today. It, it actually controls the spirit world as well. And all the soul states, the states above the spirit world, it also controls. And they're all controlled by this law of attraction. It's a very, very important law to understand. And it's a very important law to use in a, me in a, in a way that will help you get closer to God. So that's why we want to discuss it, because it's actually a law that can assist you to get closer to God. In fact, I would call the law of attraction God's messenger of truth to you. Right? So, second thing to remember about the law of attraction. The law of attraction is God's messenger of truth to you. So, the first statement I said is, what you really want, you get. And the second statement I said was that God's messenger of truth to you is this law of attraction. That what you really want, you get. So then we have to define what is real, don't we? What do we mean by what we really want? Well, your soul condition defines what you really want, not your intellect. Now we need to 
work out what's the difference between the two. What's the difference between our intellect and our soul condition? But our soul condition I have defined, and you'll notice I've put it into the section, what is soul condition in your, in your handout? And notice I've said it's the sum total of your passions, your desires, your longings, your moral beliefs, your moral condition, your aspirations, your pursuits, your emotions, your feelings, your intentions, your loves, your dislikes and hates, your fears, your religious beliefs, your scientific beliefs, your love beliefs, your mental aspirations and beliefs which come from the soul. All of those things all together are what is your soul condition. And your soul condition actually causes all of your attractions. It is not what you think you want, it is what you really want at the feeling or emotional core of you at the soul level that defines how the law of attraction works in your life. Now is everyone getting that? Now it's one thing to get that here, isn't it? Quite another thing to actually feel the truth of that here. So, if I am in a relationship, for example, that I'm not for fi finding fulfilling, it's what my soul condition wants right now in order to do something, in order to actually clear something, in order to access truth within me. Remember I said, the second thing I said, and I might write that down to you, is the law of attraction is God's messenger of truth to you. That's really important to understand. So, the law of attraction is giving me what I really want, and of course, if you think about it, God wants you to be real. That's the first thing God wants you to be. So, for example, many of us have anger in our hearts towards God, for example. Because we feel really annoyed that God hasn't given us what we want, that God hasn't given us a little rule book that we can say, well, there's God's laws and I can follow that, right? How many of you feel really frustrated about that? Where's my guidebook? Like, there's all these laws AJ is telling me about. Nobody's told them to me before. What's God doing? Right? Like, where's the, like, surely you should have, like, given an instruction manual. You know, when, when, a, when they build a car, an instruction manual comes. Somebody build this. An instruction manual, manual should have come, right? And, that, and the truth is, that instruction manual has come. But we just don't recognise it, and the instruction manual is the law of attraction. God's messenger of truth to your soul is the instruction manual. But we often don't think of it that way. We think of it as a pain in the neck. And so what we do is we look at the instruction manual, the law of attraction, that's attracted all these bad relationships and all of this bad financial situation, all these other things in my life. And so what do we do? We look at it and say, don't like that instruction manual. <laughs> Give me another one. And God said, no, no, no. This is your instruction manual. What I'm trying to do, and this is God's message to you, what I'm trying to do is tell you the truth about yourself. And the law of attraction, this law that operates on your true condition, your soul condition, tells you the truth about yourself. You, in fact, can use this law to find out the truth about everything within yourself. If you have the courage to do that. So, it's really like God saying to you, here's the instruction manual, and us having the courage to open it. Oh, AJ's got, oh, he's got anger with God. Mm, you know, and we start reading the instruction manual, which is actually a very personal instruction manual. It's not an instruction manual given to all of you like as one manual, because all of us are different, aren't we? We all have different emotions, we have different feelings, we have different passions, we have different desires. Even in our pristine condition, we have different personalities. So, does it make any sense for God to give one instruction manual? It doesn't really, does it? So what he's done is he's provided this law of attraction which operates on your personal soul condition. It's your personalised instruction manual that you have, can have the ability to open up and have a good look at what you really are. 
Now, the big problem is that most of us open something up and have a look at what we really are. You know, when we go to a mirror in the morning and we have a look, we're not that happy with what we see. And so what are we tempted to do then? We're tempted to say, oh, the mirror is a bad idea, right? <laughs> How many of you have given up the mirror altogether? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very hard to give up because we always want to see what somebody else is seeing. But if we have the courage to look at God's instruction manual, the law of attraction, which is operating on the soul condition, then we can see what God is trying to tell us about the truth about our own life about our own condition. Now, you think about that from a positive point of view. That's very powerful, isn't it? That means that every single one of us here has a personal instruction manual which we can actually look at every single moment of every single day. That's a very powerful place to be in if you see your life like that. But most of us don't see our life like that. Most of us see our life totally the opposite way and that is that I'm not responsible for what's around me. Everybody else is responsible for what's around me. And so we try to make everyone else responsible, including God, and we don't see ourselves as a powerful creator. We start seeing ourselves as the person that everybody kicks around, that everybody manipulates and controls, don't we? We start seeing ourselves as a victim of life rather than the creator of our own existence. Now, this law, the law of attraction, which operates upon the soul condition, is telling you that actually, no, you are the creator of your life, but not here. It is here that's creating your life. And if you allow yourself to ponder about that and really take that into account, your life can change very, very rapidly. 